Today I'm talking about something all of us have discussed, the word of celebrities. I've picked three biggest Indian actresses skincare videos that I'm going to take closer look at. Let's start with Priyanka Chopra Joris. And even put rose petals if you want the pink to be in there. Or if you want to be like Cleopatra, so you can just put like rose. Now let's talk about a celebrity who has her own skincare brand. Yes, it's Kirti Sanan. I do not do a mask every single day, but uh, I do it like once in a week, maybe sometimes twice, depends. Uh, if I have a chutti day and I'm not working, then I do mask kar leti hu. And if uh, I have a very, very important shoot and sometimes you know I feel like my skin is not feeling nice and I need to give it a little extra, I take a... Okay, so I love masking too. But you can definitely do it more than once a week, maybe two to three times in a week. And it also depends on what you're using your mask for. If it's for hydration, you can apply every alternate day. In fact, use some sleeping hydrating mask. And if it's for exfoliation, then do it only two to three times maximum in a week. In the morning, I do, I give my skin everything hydrating. Like all antioxidants, your vitamin C, everything which is brightening, nourishing is something I give in the morning. So here I want to talk about vitamin C. Yes, you have to use vitamin C in the morning skincare routine because as she said, it gives you brighter skin tone and it also gives you protection from the environmental aggressors. But you need to choose your vitamin C carefully. There are many different kinds of vitamin C. The most common and stable form is L-ascorbic acid. It's gentle and non-irritating to the skin. I would recommend using this every morning because morning is the time when you can protect your skin. And just use two to three drops for your entire face and neck. But there's also a hack that I saw on internet recently. The hack is actually called the skin flash, where you use vitamin C at night to wake up to a brighter skin tone. So my face is washed. It has nothing on it. I just washed it. My hands are washed. Very important. Um... Very important point. Always wash your hands before you wash your face. And always apply products to a clean face. Even if it's a mask, you have to wash your face before application. I'm going to start with putting this mask, which is very creamy, like you can see. Okay, I don't know. I've never done this before. I can see here that she's using my favorite Biologica Research mask, Viscoelastin, which is actually a great product for dehydrated skin. I love all products from Biologica Research and would definitely recommend using this. Apart from this, there are many more creamy masks that you can actually incorporate in your skincare routine. Some of the recommendations are right here. And my hands are, I know, very, very clean. Koi brush wagera hota hai, to usme pata nahi hota hai kitna clean hai, kitna nahi. Again, I absolutely agree with Kriti on this one. Using clean hands eliminates the need to constantly clean brushes and it also ensures precise coverage. Another benefit is that it enhances the increased absorption with the warmth of your hands and you can also give yourself a nice lymphatic drainage massage with the pressure modulation. It's been 30 minutes. So, let's get this mask off. Okay, so I would keep this mask only for about 15 to 20 minutes. You don't want your mask to dry up so that it feels stretchy on your skin. Then to take out the mask, wash your face with lukewarm water using circular motions with your hands. I wouldn't recommend a sponge. It could be harsh on your skin sometimes. You can even use a muslin cloth or a cotton fiber towel if you want to use. Now I've called for these microfiber towels which are very very soft like extremely soft microfiber towels are very good skin microfiber towels these are great in fact they are non-abrasive and have a very soft texture they are also environment friendly so you can definitely buy these but always remember to pat them and never rub them on your face damp skin which is your skin care it is very soft it is very good so it is just very nice to keep your skin a little damp Okay, so let me explain this. Whether your skincare should be applied on damp, wet or dry skin. It actually depends on the product that you are using. For serums and moisturizers, you should definitely apply them to slightly damp skin because it enhances their absorption and also helps seal in the hydration and allows your skin for better penetration of the active ingredients. But for products like cleansers and vitamin C, they can also be applied on dry skin. So always read the instructions on the product's label and tailor your application method according to your skin needs. I also have a quick cheat sheet for the same right over here for you to refer. So in the skin, we always go to the consistency of the thickness. I mean, the amount of watery content is the first watery product. Another basic rule of skincare layering. Always apply products from thinnest consistency to the thickest. 
Start with cleansers following by toners, lightweight serums and then moisturizers and sunscreen in the day which has to be reapplied. And at night choose facial oils or balms. This sequence will make sure that each product penetrates the skin properly and does its job correctly. Um, I have recently started using this toner. I normally use green tea uh, toner which I use. Karte green tea antioxidants. Hote hai. To, uh... Okay, so toners, let's talk about them. They are used to rebalance the skin pH level. But your cleanser is already maintaining that pH level so you can absolutely skip this step if it is not with actives. I would recommend using a toner with actives these days. There are many toners available in the market which has exfoliating properties. You can use these toners to exfoliate the skin to prep your skin for the next step. Apart from that, there are also toners which are just used for hydration purposes and has extracts like rice water and niacinamide. So understand your skin type and you can curate the toner accordingly. Talking about niacinamide, it's a fabulous ingredient. It's vitamin B3 which is used for hydration, collagen production and oil regulation as well. Apart from that, it also brightens up your skin tone. But I would prefer that in a serum based formulation rather than toner to make it even more stronger. A serum with niacinamide along with hyaluronic acid and vitamin C, peptides and ceramides should work wonderfully during the daytime. I next go with an SPF. Now, I don't like that I put a different moisturizer and then I a different SPF. Lagao. So, I use this moisturizing sunscreen. It is very hydrating and it's got ceramides. SPF with moisturizer, so okay. This is definitely something that I wouldn't recommend generally. Now, while SPF is very important for protecting the skin from harmful UV rays, a moisturizer serves a completely different purpose. Moisturizers are generally used to hydrate the skin, maintain the skincare barrier and protect the moisture loss. But if you have a very oily or acne prone skin, you can use a lightweight oil free moisturizer or even a gel for the same purpose. And also while you are using these combo ingredients, sometimes the quantity of sunblock that you would use will not be sufficient. So use a moisturizer first and then the sunblock. But if your skin is too oily and your sunblock already has some moisturizing content, then definitely in the summer you can skip the moisturizer. I use this if I am going to a meeting or if I am stepping out, then I mix this with like a tinted sunscreen. So I mix two. Okay, so I love the double sunscreen method that she's using over here. While I wouldn't mix the two sunscreens together, I would apply them one after the other. Start with the lightweight broad spectrum sunscreen, which is majorly SPF 50. And once that has been absorbed to avoid the piling on the skin, add the second layer of tinted sunblock on it. That's all. My last step is lip balm because I hate dry lips. So I put like a nice lip balm. So here she is using Laneige lip balm, which is great. But I would use this at night because it's got a very heavy texture, almost like a sleeping mask. On the day you want to use a lighter formulation, then use a lip balm which has SPF properties also. Here are some options that you can pick from. Bachawa lip balm hai. Just put it on this area which is like your crow's feet area. Any kind of petroleum gel jo hai, wo, it acts as an occlusive. Basically it it prevents water loss. Occlusives are a big category of skincare. They seal the moisture into the skin and create a protective barrier that helps prevent the trans epidermal water loss. This methodology is also called skin slugging. They are very heavy in texture and have substances like petroleum, mineral oil, and oils like jojoba and shea butter. But about their application on the crow's feet, yes, they can offer a smoothing effect by plumping up the skin and minimizing the water loss during the day. But mind it, it's only temporary. 